This is the Ricoh 2A03 microprocessor. It was developed for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1983, and the sound chip on it was used to create this. The Ricoh sound chip has five monophonic channels of audio that were used to create music and sound effects for NES games. The first two channels are pulse waves. The third channel is a triangle wave. The fourth channel is a noise channel. And the fifth channel is used for low bit depth audio samples. As you can probably tell, the sound capabilities of the NES were very limited, so composers for the system were forced to get creative, leading to the creation of some of the most iconic music in video game history. It also led to this. Now I know these colorful sounds may seem startling to you, but to me, this is art. This goes to show you how skillful certain composers were to create the music that they did. They didn't have the convenience of the modern digital audio workstations we take for granted today. Instead, music on the NES was made using sequencing software called a tracker. I won't go too much into it, but basically, composers had to write code in order to produce sounds coming from the hardware. As you can imagine, this was a very tedious and time-consuming process. Knowing this, it makes me appreciate such masterpieces as Skate or Die 2. Having someone shout Skate or Die at you is hilarious, but this took up a lot of ROM space on the NES, so most composers avoided using sampled instruments in their music. Therefore, in order to add more depth to their compositions, some tricks and techniques were used to create simulated effects. Three examples of these effects can be heard in the drawing game music for the game Pictionary. The first thing you'll notice in this track is that the kick drum has a very punchy sound. While the drum part was made using the noise channel, it was also made using the triangle wave. But the triangle wave is being used for the bass line. If every channel is monophonic, then how is this possible? This effect is achieved by the triangle wave being pitched down quickly every time the kick comes in during the bass part. The next thing you'll notice is that a single pulse channel starts playing something that sounds like a chord. This is done by the pulse wave being split into an arpeggio that is played very quickly in order to create the illusion that more than one note is being played at a time. Towards the end of the song, you'll hear something that sounds like reverb. This effect is created by two pulse wave channels. One channel is playing the melody of the song, while the other is playing the melody at a lower volume and slightly off time. It's interesting to see how some composers were able to work around the limitations they were given. However, some games would go beyond these limitations and allow the use of audio samples, most notably games made by Sunsoft, who made a few games with sampled bass lines. Other games would make use of extra sound channels due to hardware upgrades, such as Gimmick and the Japanese version of Castlevania 3.
I hope this video gives you a better understanding and appreciation for NES music. I had a lot of fun working on this video and I hope you had fun watching it. Take care my friends. All right. One more time.